Hey friend, in this video, I am teaching you how to paint 10 cute, easy, fun, uh, tropical plants using white gouache with watercolor. If you follow me on YouTube, nope, nope, nope. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I've been starting to add white gouache to my watercolor paints, the same old watercolor paints that I use all the time, just to make it a little more like creamy and so I can layer dark to light for some things. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I mix the gouache with my watercolor. Um, it's just a little bit of amount of it, and we don't have to buy actual tubes of each individual color in gouache. We're just adding white gouache to it and just kind of making it up as we go. So if you wanted to learn how to paint some tropical leaves, some tropical flowers like a bit hi hibiscus, some lilies, uh, let's do this. Let's dive into the tutorial. Also, if you don't have white gouache, you can totally still do this tutorial with just watercolor. Just, you know, do it. <laughs> it will be slightly different because you won't have these same exact paint colors and you'll be working light to dark instead of dark to light, but try it out. Um, I'm using mostly watercolor anyways with just a twinge, twinge, tinge of white, so. If you don't have white gouache, don't worry about it, but order it because it's super fun. All right, let's dive in. Okay, action. Action. All righty. <laughs> so today's painting, I am going to be doing 10 tropical leaves and flowers. We're gonna create a sheet kind of like this, but more tropical. Um, but I'm also going to be using white gouache to mix with my watercolor. So I've been doing this a lot on my Instagram for like, for example, this uh, sheet that has a bunch of different elements on it that I'm gonna scan and make into patterns for a collection. Um, but this is not bleed proof white ink, by the way. This is just an old jar that I squeezed Windsor Newton designer white gouache into it with a little bit of water. Um, and all I'm doing to get these colors that are more opaque and a little bit pastel, but not too pastel. The more white you add to the color, the more like light it's going to be. But I just wanted a thicker watercolor. So I just added um, some white gouache to some of these colors. Like for example, this pink on top of this blue leaf is just aqua rose, the normal pink that I use watercolor with a touch of the white gouache so it can stand out on top of the blue and not be transparent, but be like a bright light neon pink. Um, and most of these colors in here, I use the gouache. So we're gonna do this for some tropical elements and I'm gonna use my pencil for some of them um, and to just kind of get like a good um, outline on some of the elements that I'm gonna be sketching. So I have a Sumo Grip 0.9 lead Sakura pencil. I just started, I mean, I used to use these pencils all the time and then I ran out of lead, but I just started using them again. Love this pencil. Just refill the lead and there's a refillable eraser right there. But let's do some tropical leaves. So I can't remember what this plant is called. I think it's a money plant. I can't remember, but it looks tropical to me. So we're gonna do it. <laughs> and then this lily down here too. Um, so when you're sketching with watercolor, you want to make sure that it's super light, but since I'm doing some gouache in my watercolor, my paint is going to dry pretty opaque and you won't see the pencil through it too much. So let's start with this lily piece. We have two flowers in the center and I'm just literally doing a C curve for the stem of the flower. And then if you're not comfortable with just freehanding this flower, Start with an oval for the body of the flower and then a smaller oval for the top as your guide. And then you're gonna go around that and then just kind of do this wavy circle at the top and then right there. And then you can erase your guides. Easy peasy. And then same thing for this other flower, we're going to crisscross here, do your oval, and then other direction oval. Wavy, 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 wavy. 
and then erase the ovals. And then we've got our leaves that are all coming out from the same spot right here. So start with your C curve first for the center of the leaf. And then I'm just going in and adding some S curves. C curve and wave. Some leaves are going behind others. There you go. And you can map out your leaves wherever you want them to go. That's kind of a lot of leaves, but we're gonna leave it. All right, next little element guy I'm gonna do is this, uh, actually no, we're gonna do something like this. This isn't a tropical leaf necessarily, so we're gonna make it more tropical vibe. Um, maybe like a monstera, maybe just like a wavy looking leaf. We're just giving the vibe of tropical leaves. I'm not looking at any reference photos for these leaves. So no correcting me in the comments. Um, Cause we're just going for the vibe. This is a loose style watercolor painting. So we're just gonna do an S curve for this st main stem and then a C curve. And then let's do like these big bigger leaves that we're gonna have some cool design on top of when we add the paint. Now let's do just a big elephant ear uh, leaf. If you don't know what an elephant ear is, it's so cool and huge. It's like a huge heart-shaped leaf with some ridges on the edge. So I've got an S curve and I'm just going, I'm just placing these wherever. We're not like making it really that specific. And I'm gonna make this thicker. And maybe we have another one coming out here that's smaller and goes behind that one like so. And we can do some, some of these smaller elephant ear looking things, round leaves. So just C curves for all the stems, crisscrossing, some hanging down a little bit more than others. And then we're just gonna go with almost a heart shape, not quite a circle, not quite a heart. So we're just, for all of these sketches, we're just doing simple curves and simple shapes. And then for the hibiscus flower, we're gonna do similar to this, but we're gonna have a little shooting out moment in the center of the flower. So I'm just gonna sketch in a circle, a small circle. And for my petals, I'm gonna start skinny at the base and then get wide and wavy. And maybe have some going behind and then we have our stamen. Next, I'm gonna just do this like small filler flower. We have a lot of these like hanging, hanging bell looking flowers. If you picture a tropical jungle, I'm just gonna do like teardrop shapes for these flowers. Like so. Next, I'm gonna do a dragon fruit. Those are pretty common tropical fruits. I'm gonna start with an oval. 
I actually have a dragon fruit in my first everyday watercolor book. Check it out. And he's got a little hat. So I'm gonna do two C curves. There's a little hat, maybe a little shorter that looks like pineapple. And then we have the outline, which is gonna be bright pink. And then the center is gonna be white with black spots. Let's do a bird of paradise. These are also in my book, Everyday Watercolor. But we're gonna make this one small and tiny. I'm gonna start with like a beak of a bird, hence the name, and some C curves for the crown. This isn't gonna be, you know, an exact replica. And then we're kind of just doing almond shapes for the leaves. Let's do this type of leaf. So we're just going to do a C curve. C curves for where these leaflets will be. And then we're just going to start at the top and connect. Okay, now we're gonna do a flower like these without the stalk or the um, leaves. But we'll start with a circle for where our center point is. And from here, I'm gonna go around with some almond shapes, like so. And then we'll pull out petal number one. Some leaves. Okay, now it's time to paint. Most of these paintings are gonna be done with my size two brush. Some elements, like the bigger leaves, will be with my size six. But all of them will have some bits of gouache. This is a little hard and dry, so I'm gonna chop it up. Starting with these lily flowers up here, I'm gonna mix up a light pink with gouache. So grabbing a bigger brush so I can make a mixture first, size six, and some opera rose. Take it up here to where it's kind of clean. If you like your mixing areas to be really clean, then just grab a dish or an empty palette. And I'm going in there and adding some white gouache to it to thicken the color and lighten the color. So if you want it to be a darker pink, then just grab more opera rose than the white. Okay, I'm gonna save that gouache on my size six brush, just in case I need it later. Okay, so I'm grabbing it on my size six brush. And I'm gonna paint over my entire sketch. And because we're using gouache with our watercolor, we can layer lighter colors on top because the white gouache is going to help it stand out on top. Whereas with just plain watercolor, the lighter colors are hard to see on top of darker colors because they're transparent. I want this next pink flower to be a little lighter. Maybe a little lighter for the sky too. There we 
there we go. We'll add details to that once that gets drier. Now I'm grabbing some sap green, lemon yellow deep for the green mixture. And again, my white wash. I'm very type B, so if this stresses you out, you can mix them in separate dishes, rinse off, but I don't like to waste paint, so I'm just going on top. You can always clean off my yellow later. So I'm gonna go here and just go over my sketch for my stem. Maybe some of these leaves are darker than others, but we're gonna add some funky details on top of these leaves too, once they dry. I'm gonna do two tone leaves for this plant to keep things fun and interesting. So some bright yellow greens, lime greens, and maybe some dark blue or blue greens. More tropical colors. So no like sage greens or olive greens. We're keeping things like rich, bright yellow green, with some blue-green. So for blue-green, I'm grabbing Prussian blue and mixing it with sap green and my white. This part is a little too wet, so I'm gonna avoid that right now. Maybe go back over this side to make it more blue. Adding some contrast to some of these stems for shadow. It's still watercolor, so those bleeds here and there are gonna be fun. And we'll come back to that and add some fun detail to it. Next, I'm gonna do something different and do a pink stem with pink veining detail on the green leaves. So we're just kind of in the tropical color palette family, but we're not replicating exactly like exact plant types and leaves, leaves. I'm gonna add the pink later, actually. So now we're gonna do our dark blue color, blue-green. and white. Everything has a little bit of white in it. So same thing as over here, we're gonna do two tones, but between our blue green and just a little bit more blue on the, on the brush. Oops. So I went over the pink right there with the blue, but doesn't matter, man. 
Gonna go back over it anyways. With the gouache, it's much easier to layer light on dark than just pure watercolor. So I'm gonna wait for these leaves to dry before I add my pink on top. And we're gonna move on to this bigger leaf situation where I'm gonna do, let's do like a lime green with blue veining detail. So again, with my white gouache, sap green and lemon yellow deep for this mixture. I want it to be like very yellow, just cause. Maybe a touch of blue, oops. Go ball turquoise. And here we go. Just filling in my sketch. But since I do licensing, all of these elements get scanned. Um, I like that green, that's nice. Get scanned and turn into patterns like for fabric, clothing, stationary products. You could also, if you're new to licensing, create a digital collection of these elements and put them up for sale in Creative Market. Obviously replicating my stuff is a no-no if you're gonna sell it, but I'm saying what I could do for them, with them. You could paint these on cards and give them to your friends. You can hang them up in your house, in your office. this to be a shadow under the overlap right there. So I'm gonna grab more sap green to make it a darker green. Right there. I like the two-tone look, so I'm gonna go back on this side, make it darker. I'll come back and add details on that soon. Back to my size two brush. And this guy's gonna have some blue leaves and some green leaves. So I've got my Prussian blue and gouache, white gouache mixture over here with my size two brush. Maybe this one is blue. Do half and half for this guy. Sap green and white gouache. little more yellow for this one. Whoop, just put my hand in my leaf. <laughs> Don't want to put that on my paper, so I've got my fist down. You want a nice 
blend of gouache and watercolor feeling. Like watercolor with a little less water and a little more gouache, well, some gouache. So it's still moving, but the texture, instead of like really thin and watery, is more like you're spreading a paste, a really oily paste. The reason why I'm doing, I'm even adding gouache is because I just started using gouache for the first time ever and I fell in love. And instead of buying a whole new palette of gouache, like with my red, blue, yellow, all my colors, I'm just adding white gouache to my colors I already have that are watercolor because watercolor is just a more transparent version of gouache. So we can mix them really easily. It's cheaper that way. And it also just is, a, it's just a really fun texture to play with and it's fun to layer because it's more opaque than watercolor. I'm gonna add more detail to that later once that dries too. Now let's do a pink peachy color for our hibiscus flower. So I'm just adding lemon yellow deep to my opera rose and white gouache. Painting over the whole flower because I'm going to add petal details with a darker with a darker color once this dries. Like this will be darker red, bright red. I'm thinking. Okay, coming back to that. Let's use a lemon yellow deep and white gouache flower for this next one. Mix it up. I'm gonna start with just painting in these bulbs. I'm gonna make these little stems right here red. But first, So for that stem, I used the tip of the brush with the vertical hold. And this one to get thick at the bottom, we're just applying pressure gradually. I'm gonna grab some Scarlet Lake up here with my pink and white mixture. Just a tiny bit of white gouache and a tiny bit of opera rose. And I wanna make sure I don't have too much of this on my brush um, because we're doing such a small area, I don't want it to bleed too much into our yellow flowers. Are these real plants? Not sure, but they look tropical and they look like real. They're just references to real plants. Mm. It is dragon fruit time. So the rim of this fruit is bright, bright pink. So I'm gonna grab Scarlet Lake, Opera Rose, and just a touch of white gouache. And we're gonna go into some green up here. So I'm gonna paint the pink first, pretty color. 
loosely following my sketch. Then I'm gonna grab water on my brush so that it blends into my green nicely. Let's do lemon yellow deep, white gouache, and sap green for a chartreuse lime green color. Start away from the pink and then into it. So it's kind of blending for you. And then I'm just gonna have water on my brush and swoop, swoop to cover the inside of the fruit. Cause it is white, but I'm just gonna get this nice little pink bleed on the edge cause the pink is just a little wet. And then once that dries, we'll go back on top of it with some seeds. Bird of paradise. So we've got like orange and blue petals, lime green situation. It might be helpful to pull up a reference photo, but I'm just gonna paint what I feel like painting color wise. I'm creating the pattern. So I've got lime green and then a blue green underneath. And then we'll do cadmium orange. I'm gonna mix it with my pink and white. So I'm starting thin and then adding pressure. Gonna go in and add some yellow to you. Go in and add the stem. And our leaves. Okay, I want another blue leaf with pink detail, so grabbing more Prussian blue, adding it to my Prussian blue and white gouache mix over here. And we're gonna shrink. Okay, let's do another pink flower. 
with some fun details once it dries. I'm going to avoid this middle area because it's a bigger section, so I can. If it was a lot smaller, I would just go over it and then layer on top with the yellow green, but I'm going to go around it. This is Opera Rose, Touch of Cadmium Orange, and some White Gouache. It's the type of flowers on the lays. On the what? The lays, when you get laid after Clumerius? landing. I think Clumerius? They're not hibiscus? No, they're those smaller flowers. They're like white. Oh, yeah. Some might be done with hibiscus. I'm not sure. What's the flowers in the hair? Hibiscus? Yeah. Maybe. Or plumerias? Mm -hmm. Quick. Quect. <laughs> Correct us, Hawaiians. Is that, a, is that an exclusively Hawaiian thing, or is that all other islands as well? I mean, I guess I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I can't know everything, John. I wish that you did. I'm not Google. I do love Hawaii, though. <laughs> I don't know. I want to go there right now. <laughs> we could see these in real life and just... Not have to paint them to see them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Coming back to that and adding detail up here, we need it to be, I mean, we can do a lighter detail, but I'm going to do a darker, bright red with just a touch of white gouache in it, layering on top. And I'm going to get my brush really thin, so I'm just kind of cleaning the tip of it a little bit to make it come back to its point and going as light as possible outline Let's see, do I want to add red anywhere else? Since I have red on my brush, I'm going to continue with the red. So let's start with the, let's go to the hibiscus. details but I feel like the flower wants it. And then I'm going to outline the petals. follow the pink super carefully. And then let's do some S curves. I 
I just want one of those flowers in my hair <laughs> on a beach with a coconut drink in my hand. Yes, please. I don't know if that would look good, though, in my hair. <laughs> Probably not. It would look cute. On me? Yeah. Be super cute in Miles' hair. Super. Super duper. Probably not cute on dad. <laughs> now I'm going to do the pink for that situation. For it to really pop on dark, dark blue. I want it to be a really bright and light pink. I'm trying to get it to match the color I painted the stem, but we can always go on top of it. Forty-five degree, thin, stripey lines. So you probably wouldn't see an exact replica of this type of leaf in the tropical rainforest, but we're given that vibe with the colors, the dark, rich greens and blues with some bright reds and pinks and yellows. Doing a dark blue-green with some gouache. Every color on this paper has a little bit of gouache in it so that it can layer And I might just do bloop, 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 bloop with my size two brush. You can do this without gouache, but you're gonna have more transparent layers. So like that pink would not show up on your blue. So you could do pink leaves with blue, dark blue details. So you go light to dark with watercolor. But because I'm using gouache, I can go dark to light or light to dark. And now for some more pink. For this yellow flower, I'm going to add some blue dots. I'm going to do blue dots since we're, we don't have any black on this. Dragon fruit seeds are black, but this is a loose style painting. And people are gonna know when they look at this that this is a dragon fruit that we're just using slightly different colors. Some smaller dots, some bigger dots. And then for these leaves, I might just do a couple notch type things here and there, not on every leaf.
like so. And then we're gonna move on to our dark blue leaf and add more pink. Going up the center first, then down the middle of each leaflet. Now let's do our final flower. If some mixture with gouache in it ha has dried and you're mixing well, I'm just grabbing a tiny, tiny bit of water and making it come back to life. These little almond shapes are gonna be bright yellow green. I'm gonna add dark green lines on top of it. And some leaves up in here that I'm gonna add dark green details to. Okay, to make this flower a little bit different, I'm gonna go in and add detail on the tops of the petals. Just putting these in as C-curves with medium pressure. with little and some blue green darker Done. You can, if you want, go back in and add more highlights or more details with lighter colors, like if you wanna add some bright yellows or whites. Um, but I'm gonna call it a day. Those are some fun little elements that I'm gonna to add to a pattern someday. Hope you had fun. I could paint these nudes all day long. There you have it, folks. So much fun. I am currently very addicted to gouache. I have always said, I don't use white paint. I work with watercolor and the paper is white or you just lighten your colors with water. But I'm, um, I bit the, what's the phrase? I bit the- Bullet. No, I got, I scratched, what? <laughs> got the itch. Got I got, the bug. got the yeah, the, I, I caught the, the gouache bug. That's it, that's I, what they all say. I caught the gouache bug and I'm, I now just want to paint with white gouache in everything that I do now. So we might be seeing that a lot more on this channel. If you haven't tried it, definitely check out the links below where all the supplies are that I used in this video and all the videos that I, in, that I use, that I teach. And <laughs> let me know in the comments below, did you try out gouache for the first time? Or maybe you're a seasoned pro with gouache. Let me know what your favorite brand of gouache is. I use Windsor & Newton, but I hear there's great other great ones out there. Send them my way in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. 
so you don't miss any future videos. And that also helps us spread the word about these videos and gets it into the eyes and hands, virtual hands of more viewers. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll, I almost saluted. <laughs> thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.